Oh, it's getting serious now. Oh, baby passenger when that happens. We've just received our two freshwater tanks. Big lithium batteries in the bottom. The reality of building a truck. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So because we've got four beautiful days ahead of us, we've decided to not only wake up earlier, but as well have breakfast here at the shed so that we're already on site. I'm making breakfast for Chris and he's already kind of like in the box uh, looking at what we're going to get up to today. We're going to continue the electronics cabinets which we have started to do yesterday. But we need obviously to think ahead, uh, like the shelf, the dimension, we don't have it yet on electronics. It should arrive very soon, so that's very exciting. Uh, but yeah, we've got a dimension, I guess, on the paper. So we uh, just need to make sure everything fits nicely. Think about as well, like ventilation for it, things like that. So yeah, that's quite exciting. Like while we wait for our shower door to be built, basically, we are um, trying to build other things so that we don't get too delayed. So that's the job for today. And we'll potentially as well look at the storage that we've got above the garage on the right side, uh, which will be for our clothing. We didn't agree exactly on the design. I wanted some hangers. Chris thinks it's not uh, useful. So we need to have another chat about it. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll come up with an agreement. It's getting serious now. Today, Chrissy Boy is teaching me how to do the mitre saw. All right, so. So this is the length that you want. So, yep, so that's going to go. And so pick that up. Yep, push that in. Cool. Now, don't clamp it down. Just put it on top. Cool. So then... That's your safety, mm -hmm. and that's the trigger. Mm -hmm. Take your hand off both of them when you're testing this stuff, yeah. okay? So you can see the shadow. Mm -hmm. So we need to line that up. That looks pretty good there. So you really want to hold it hard when you're tightening it, otherwise it'll gradually slip and you can't really tell. Okay, so that looks like it's the right position. Okay. So now you want to spray it with the shifty bastard. So lift up the safety, spray a little bit. Yep, probably too much. Okay. Yeah, too much. And then down. So you turn the trigger on, so safety in, on, and you very slowly cut through it. Okay. Okay? Not really, so you've seen about the speed. If you go too fast, you'll chip a tooth. So once you've made the cut, let go of the trigger. Okay. Don't be pulling it out with it going. Okay. Because what can happen is it'll catch that and throw it. Okay. Yeah. But that was a bit, bit faster than that. Because as you're cutting, it's heating up. Go and then undo that. Oh. Chrissy boy is a good teacher. Then if we measure that. Better be 64. Perfection. Oh no, that's good. Perfect. Okay, so we got one. <laughs> Yay. All 
right, so making some good progress on the electronics cabinets. Chris is doing the final cuts by having a little lunch break. I have to put his bagels up high here so that Chuk doesn't get it. Yeah, you, your lunch fifth. And the lunch wouldn't be complete without a coffee, second coffee of the day. And that's perfect timing because we've received a new delivery from the Gums Coffee. All right, so which one am I gonna have? I think I'll make the red gum. A few people ask us which was our favorite. Red gum, so, so good. And then to go with that, some more ginger nuts. Normally we only have ginger nuts in the morning, but we've been having those in the afternoon just as a little treat. They are from South Africa. Penny offered them to us, so thank you again, Penny. They are actually really, really good. They're quite different from the ones um, like we've tried before and very surprised with them. So if you've got any ginger nut brands from any country of the world that we should try, let me know in the comments because we love trying new ones. Making coffee. Ooh. <laughs> Imagine you're decorating a cake. So, after two days working on our cabinet, it is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, electronics cabinet. Lots of shelves, so we've tried to feature proof ourselves as much as possible. And we've used, as you can see, kind of a cheap wood that we could get our hands on quite easily for this. Um, basically, like chipboard with melamine, and it has like a nice edge to it so good for like kitchen shelving and stuff i guess don't know if i would use it again but um, <laughs> it's worked okay for in here because this aluminium in the brackets is proving to be a bit difficult to get a nice finish so i need to really have a think about how the rest of the um, cabinetry is going to go what we had done is we bought the bottom shelves and, and notched those out and then we bought some really cheap mdf and glued another sheet of MDF which had melamine on the front <laughs> to try and create like a, a nicer finish than obviously that and then we're going to have that as our back wall but you probably can't tell on the GoPro but this is a slightly different shade of white yeah. and the chipboard so it ended up looking gash so um, we decided to go back to Bunnings last night grab some more of this melamine and that will be our back wall and it's all the other walls down here so it's a little bit of an odd cabinet this will be a fixed wall we may have some screens on this potentially and monitors and this will be a door that opens on this side we'll have <laughs> two big lithium batteries in the bottom space for two more lithium batteries in the future if we ever need to go up um, in Europe or anything. yeah in, in terms of our storage capacity then we have two shelves for electronics and then we have our inverter inverter dc dc and main panel, solar controller yeah. solar controller all that jazz uh here obviously there'll be another big piece of this here once we've fixed it after the shower's been pushed in <laughs> and then we'll be able to drill holes all the way down through this for cabling and um, that's not going to be a problem at all. We'll just use a hole saw and just drill through. 
And at the very bottom, we'll probably have rubber on the floor and a way to secure the batteries nicely. Um, but yeah, that's, that's turned out okay, I think. Obviously the finish on the front, we won't do out of this stuff. We'll try and do it out of whatever material we're gonna use as our main nice material. But this was a good affordable way to do shelving. Good morning. Chris is currently studying my air ride seat in the cab. We may have a little trip planned very soon, just for a few days, just to get a little break. So yeah, we need to get that done. He's looking as well at installing maybe the stairs. Hopefully the new system works and we can show it to you in the coming days or potentially today. I'm back at the admin station just for a few hours. And this morning I had to chase a few orders that we've got that have been massively delayed. And the great news is we are receiving our shower door finally today. And as well, we are receiving a water tanks this week. So like lots of like deliveries, like bits and pieces as well. So it feels like a little bit like Christmas, lots of um, work ahead for us. But you know, that's very exciting. It's better than waiting for orders. And I'm currently looking as well at our website. I haven't had the chance to really progress on it. So what I've done is that the past days, I've showed Chris the different templates I selected last time and I quite liked, and we agreed on one together. And I'm working now on it this morning. So that's the good thing with Squarespace. You've got so many templates to choose from. You can personalize them to your needs. Uh, for example, for us, I made sure we had all our social media uh, link uh, very uh, available and kind of like catchy at the top. I want to make sure we've got all our YouTube as well, video link to the website. I made sure we've got a little section about a build where I can put all the links about everything we will be buying because I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of questions at the end of the build. And I'm working as well at the moment on like the personalizing the uh, theme and the colors. So what I've done is I'm looking at our logo on Photoshop and I kind of like want to use this palette of colors in some different sections of the website. So for example, here I use this kind of like light yellowy color and I can just put it and save it in my different theme here, which I'm gonna do with all the colors. It's gonna take me a little bit of time, but it will be worth it. I'm making sure as well that our website looks good on the phone. So I think it's quite important here when you scroll through and as well for me personally is to potentially edit on the road. Uh, we may have to change some things so I can easily do it. So Squarespace is great for that. It's a really mobile optimized platform where you've got everything on your phone. So yeah, it looks really, really good. I'm really happy with that. And as you can see as well, the last thing on the website here on the right is a shop section. So Squarespace is great for that. It's an e-commerce platform. You've got everything there on your website with securized payment. So at the moment, we'll only have our eBooks and our stickers, obviously, but hopefully in the future, we'll be able to add some merch. We've got a few ideas, but obviously we are way too busy right now to think about launching anything, but yeah, stay tuned maybe in the future. So if you are ready like us to launch your own website, you can go to www.squarespace.com slash the outfit and you can get 10% off your first website purchase or domain. Get in there. <laughs> it's like I'm wrapping a birthday present. <laughs> Come on. It is actually my birthday present. Well, that's true actually. <laughs> so what are you doing? Just removing the plastic finally on my air ride seat that we've been having. Since the beginning of the year, that was a birthday present from my parents. So we had installed Chris once, but we had a bit of trouble with my base, which the passenger side is like really different from the driver one. Mm. But we bought a base and got it worked. Chris kindly installed it for me yesterday. It's me. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, you're struggling, eh? How does it feel to finally have a seat up next to me? Ta-da! And I sit so high, it's so cool. Yeah, so um, I plumbed up the airline yesterday and uh, that was super easy because I'd already done the other one. And you've been sitting in that little dicky seat that we bought and that was meant to be our middle seat uh, for our baby passenger when that happens. <laughs> so uh, no time soon. Now um, we got the seat base made up from Ben Nash at Mog Central. So thanks Ben got that all set up. Now the reason we've been umming and ahhing and haven't done it until now is that I was concerned if we used that dicky seat this entire passenger setup had to be shifted this way towards the door and that's not as simple as just drilling some new holes in the floor so that was going to require fabrication, engineering and all that and that's why this has taken so bloody long but 
Clint and I have come up with a strategy to have a child in a, well, for now in a crib, right? Or a, a baby seat, whatever you call them these days, up really high in the middle. So it's gonna be above my gear shift lever and all that. That won't have to be kinked or moved like it would have had to have been with that dicky seat. So what Ange and I need to do is we need to buy the baby seat that we think we want, so that we have the measurements, and then we're now thinking of some sort of a rail system in the middle that can click into like an ISO fix point um, and make sure it's obviously incredibly safe and legal. So um, now Ange can have her seat for now, and that means we can also finish all of our car builders finally. Yeah because the car builders have made the most monumental change and difference, but we couldn't really show you all of that just because we couldn't finish Angie's mm -hmm. side because I knew we'd have to rip it all out and move the seat, but we can. So over the next few days, probably when it's not great weather, I guess, we can probably carpet all through here and just finish the bloody job off. And then at least the cab is done apart from whatever this rail system is that we'll do in the middle. So uh, the next time I turn on the truck, Angie will actually go, a little bit, hopefully not too high because it's already pretty high. And uh, we'll be good to go. Merci papou mamou pour le seat. That's for mama and papa. <laughs> okay. So we still haven't received our shower door, but on the positive side, we've just received our two freshwater tanks. So that's excellent news. We can put them in the morgue and start the plumbing of those. They are from a company called Atlas Tanks in Queensland, which specialize in poly tanks. So you've got two options. You can go with a standard size tank or you can go with a custom uh, option, which we thought initially we will do. I spent a lot of time on CAD doing like some different drawings, which ended up actually not very useful because the custom tanks, they were actually very expensive. We had a quote for more than $2,000 for two tanks with all the fittings, inspection ports and all that kind of thing. So we ended up trying to get a, uh, like a better quote, I guess and ended up with those standard sizes, which we have lost a little bit of volume of water compared to what we wanted initially, but 370 liters here, uh, which will be more than enough with everything else we've got in the mug. So yeah, very happy with that. So what we did when we opened the tank, we obviously have all our fittings on the side. We just put like some labels just to know the sizes and it's just kind of like trying to work out what fittings we're gonna need to buy in the coming days. Uh, like all the John Guest fittings that you would have seen in the previous video. So yeah, that's going to be the plan, I guess, in the coming days uh, to have to plumb that up. So that's very exciting. All right, I have a question for you guys about the tanks. So have any of you ever done some DIY baffles? I know you can get these giant uh, baffle balls that you put in big commercial water tanks that are on the back of trucks. I want to make something a little bit similar, but that can be uh, potable water friendly. And I don't know if Ange has already said the reason these don't have poly tanks is because the roto, uh, they don't have baffles because they're roto molded. So what I'm thinking is making some PVC, well, getting some PVC pipe and either having it standing up in the tank or running long ways and across and drill a whole bunch of holes in them and shove a bunch of PVC pipe in the actual tanks themselves via this port. That would suitably, I think, break up the aqua hammer effect that you would get um, when we, you know, break or we're going off road. I know we need something. The only problem with that is it might take up quite a bit of volume and therefore reduce our total water storage capacity. So yeah, please reach out in the comments if you have done something like this before, if you've heard of it being done. Otherwise, I think I'll give the PVC pipe a crack. Phantom string, the aluminium. So we had a few comments in a previous video, I think when we introduced the aluminium, that there was a few ways that we can make it faster and I guess like better. And you're right, we can definitely like make a little notch with the drill. Chris tried. It just doesn't look great. So obviously it's kind of like a last resort kind of situation. If really one day we do need to do that, we can. I'd love to have a tool that makes this process faster, but we try with a ratchet spanner. And unfortunately, it does not fit between our two bolts. So the reason why it's so slow and so fastidious 
is because we're making our own brackets. There are obviously some special fastener that you can buy and it's just like a pen in a bit like this, but it's also much more expensive. So I guess we <laughs> at this stage we're still like happy to kind of take a bit longer. Yeah, when we will be done with that side and done with the kitchen, I can imagine what will be um yeah over it i'm over it today the reality of building a truck it's not always fun it's hard it's boring sometimes just being honest and this is the last bracket oh my god i did it oh i'm so proud of myself and it's super strong can lean on it oh so just to show you a little bit <laughs> so this is more storage here so i've got a huge compartment and above here it will be for a little bed for a child which is kind of weird to think about it but yeah it is where it's gonna be so this concludes this week's video as you can see there was not much progress unfortunately i were quite held back by the shower door to make progress in the bathroom in positive news, it has finally arrived. We'll show it to you next week. Hopefully make a lot of progress the coming week. So yeah, it's the reality of building a truck. There are some wins, there are some loss, there are some good weeks, some slow progress. It's yeah, a hell of a journey. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in guys. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah, and please like and subscribe if you do like the content and I'll build <laughs> it to give us a little like boost of encouragement.